Hey there. So this video is to maybe give some clarification on 16th notes. Um, they look a lot harder than what they actually are to play. Um, don't be intimidated by the fact that you see more notes joined together and there's more black ink that goes along with them. It's really not that bad. Think about a pie graph. If you take a circle, you divide it in half, you still have a hole, all right? And you just have one half and another half, but together they equal a whole. If you divide that again into four equal pieces, you still have a whole piece, but each piece is now smaller. So that's really what 16th notes are. It's like taking one quarter note and dividing it in half and then in half again. So you have four uh, smaller, or in this case, faster notes that equal one. And that sounds a little bit like this. Here are quarter notes. Eighth notes, I divide those in half. I divide in half a little further. So really that's all we're doing is we're taking our note values much slower. So let's take that and apply it to the book. I'm in the Essential Elements book, uh, page 26. This is book two of the original series. And this is number 107, the rhythm rap. So you'll see in the chart, you'll see two quarter notes divided into four eighth notes divided into four, or actually I should say eight sixteenth notes. And so quarters are just one, two, one, two. Eighths are one and two and one and two and sixteenths are one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a however many beats per measure you have. Now you can also use some syllables, we'll talk about that, but if I look at number 107 and just count it, looking at that, I have four four, so four beats in a measure, it literally says one E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three rest, one, two, three E and a four and one E and a two and three rest. So that's 107. Okay, now if I were to clap that, I'm just going to tap it on the edge of my violin. It's the same idea. I'm going to count out loud while I tap. One E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three. Rest. One, two, three E and a four and one E and a two and three. Rest. And of course there's a repeat, which I would suggest doing. Let me just play that on an open D string. Again, this is number 107. And it goes like this. This is the rhythm wrap on the D string. You can do this on a D string. You could put it on your rosin. Put the bow in the rosin and do it that way. That also works. But here it is. One E and a two and ready now. One E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three. Lift. Watch the lifts on the rest. Number 108. This is the exact same rhythm, but now I'm changing notes. I'm going to use notes from my D scale that are on the D string. Here we go. One E and a two and. One E and a two and. Three E and a four and. One E and a two and. Three. Lift. One. So now, let's go ahead and do this with syllables, all right? You can use anything that has four syllables, like Mississippi. That works. Uh, my student uh, teaching, coordinating teacher, uh, Mrs. Pepper from Tiffin City Schools, used to say Mississippi hot dog, and that works too. Uh, I know another teacher says motorcycle stop stop. So there we have it. So that's your basic rhythm there. Uh, looking at 109, I'm just reversing the rhythm now. One and two E and a. Notice it starts with eighth notes, followed by sixteenths. Lift. Lift and, of course, repeat. Hope that helps you with this. Apply what we've worked on with 16th notes with 
what you know so far and using this video and work on number 110. Do A and B separately. You'll notice that the rhythms are different. And then 111. I know you guys can do that because you're smart. All right. So um, let me know if you have any questions on these. Thanks a lot.